Life in Your Backyard. Okay, start reading now. On a clear spring morning, a male song sparrow perches on top of a post and sings at the top of his voice. His song is telling the other birds, this is the place for me, this is my territory. This is a place where I can raise a family. You might hear his catchy song too, because a place that he claims as his home might just be your own backyard, a yard, park, garden, or other green patch of earth near you. <clears throat> your backyard's wild. Every backyard, no matter how big or small, is a wildlife habitat. That's a place where wild animals, wild creatures, wild creatures live and find everything they need to survive. That might seem like a lot to expect from your small piece of planet Earth, but any animal looking for a home really needs just a few basic things. Look at the few basic things. Food. Every living creature needs food. Earthworms feed on soil and bits of decaying plant matter. Robins eat berries, insects, and earthworms. Almost any plant, insect, or other small creature might be food for another member of the natural community. And then there are insects. <clears throat> they also need water too, many of them. Many insects get all the water they need from their food. But some, including praying mantises and butterflies, need a refreshing drink from time to time. Most birds and mammals need to drink water. Many birds use water to bathe in, too. Cover means places to hide and be safe. For example, a box turtle living in a garden may find cover in some flowers or tall grass. An animal also needs a small, safe place to raise its young. The mother box turtle lays her eggs in a nest that she digs out of soft soil or sand. Which living things share your environment? How does your backyard meet their needs for food, water, cover, and a place to raise their young? The best way to find out is to become a backyard naturalist a person who studies nature up close and firsthand. Who knows, you might already be one. Okay, you guys? Could probably look around your yard and see what kind of uh, insects or birds or animals you can see. And you could draw a picture of it. You could post it on here when you sign in, too, for their science class. This is for kindergarten and first graders. See, turn the page. Oops, the big book. There. Backyard insects. Insects are the most numerous animals on Earth. In fact, scientists have counted over 88,000 different species, kinds of insects in North America alone. That's a big number. Can you guys count to 88,000? I think I might or I might not, but you guys, you can count up to what? Maybe 100, maybe even more, but look at that number. Over 88,000 different species of insects in North America alone, meaning all those different kinds. Beetles make up the largest group of insects. A bean beetle like this one might be found in a vegetable garden in your own neighborhood. It eats the leaves of green plants. See that picture of the beetle? That's called a bean beetle. And this one is a leafhopper. Leafhoppers also feed on plants. 
They have straw-like mouth parts that help them suck the juices of grasses, garden plants, wildflowers, bushes, and trees. Let's see if we have this one. You know this one, huh? Scientists estimate that more than half of all insect species prey on other insects for food. This ladybug, which is also a kind of beetle, can gobble up dozens of little plant-eating insects called aphids in a single day. Oh, we love those beet um, <laughs> we love those um, bugs, huh? This kind right here, the ladybug. There. We do we talked about this a while ago. The praying mantis. The praying mantis got its name from the way it often holds up its front legs as if it were praying. But you can also think of it as the praying mantis because it eats nothing but other insects. Mosquitoes, flies, grasshoppers, beetles, and aphids are just a few of the many six-legged creatures that this that it hunts. That's a mantis. See that praying mantis? Why does it have its hand like that or its front leg? That's why it's called a praying mantis, huh? And it holds its legs up in the front but it's looking for something to eat. <clears throat> Let's see. Now, and if some colorful flowers catch your eye, chances are that you'll see insects like bees, wasps, butterflies, and ants hovering or crawling around. That's no accident that insects and plants are partners. Hey, they're partners, insects and plants. A flower's bright colors and sweet scent send a special message to insects like this bumblebee. Come and get your favorite foods. There's powdery pollen and liquid nectar here. The busy bee accepts invitation after invitation, traveling from flower to flower. As it does, it leaves behind something that each flower needs some grains of pollen from another flower of the same species. These pollen grains will help the flowers make new seeds. <clears throat> Many flowers have special markings that act as nectar guides for their insect visitors. The dotted paths on this foxglove show an insect exactly where to go for a sip of nectar and a good dusting of pollen Okay, and then we have down here. Have you ever wondered why some flowers such as tulips, morning glories, and daisies close their petals at night and on rainy days? By closing up, they are able to save their nectar and pollen for a sunny day. That's when their insect pollinators are active. Okay, there you go. You have had your um, science lesson. Let me see what's on the next page. Maybe we'll do one more. Oh, look at this. Backyard birds. There's a woodpecker, huh? And then some small birds. Oh, look at this pretty one. It's a robin. And then that might be a, let's read about it. <laughs> Backyard birds. Tap, tap, tap. Ya, ya, ya. Cheerio, cheerily, cheery. Chip, chip, chip. The sights and sounds of birds are everywhere. If you pay close attention, you can learn about their different voices, sizes, shapes, and colors, and ways of life. You can also learn about your backyard by looking at it from the bird's point of view. To them, it's a place to eat, rest, hide, and maybe even raise a family. Woodpeckers use their strong beaks to chisel nest holes in dead trees. This red-headed woodpecker is cleaning house, emptying out most of the wood chips that f fell in during excavation. It will be sure to leave some inside, though, 
they'll make a cozy lining for the nest. Like many birds, white-breasted nuthatches eat a variety of foods. These little birds get their name from their skill at cracking open acorns and other hard nuts, nut hatches. Some people also call them upside down birds because they walk down tree trunks as they look for insects to eat. So they are called nut hatches, huh? <laughs> and then there's one picture of a robin right here. Pretty robin. Robins and most other backyard birds build nests in the branches of trees and shrubs. The trees and shrubs also provide the birds with which cover from predators and harsh weather. And some like first or and some like this fireborn bush offer a bonus of fruit to eat. Birds that spend a lot of time on the ground pecking for seeds and insects are known as ground feeders. These this dark eyed junco is one. Sparrows, cardinals, blue jays, and morning doves are some other families that feed on the ground. Ground feeders. Okay. So, I think we will continue on this book. It's called Life in Your Backyard. And then we will, what I would like your, your, what you get out of this is I'd like to see it by you drawing me a picture of some insect or bird or animal that lives around your house. I don't know if even cats and dogs would be. Maybe a lot of them aren't yours, but somebody else's. Yeah, just draw me a picture, okay, guys? Thank you, and you have a good day. We'll see you again, or you'll hear me again.